the lecture regarding uh, <clears throat> for the pharmaceutical production in uh, Nepal. So please welcome Professor Kancha. And sorry for my late. Sorry. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, Professor, uh, I'm so, uh, and, and uh, first of all, I would like, may I see my screen here yeah? first? Okay. Yes, we can see your screen. Did you see my presentation now? Yes, we can see your presentation file. Okay. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank <clears throat> Uh, Department of uh, Nuclear Medicine, Seoul International, uh, Seoul National University for, for providing me this opportunity to be here in front of you and speak um, uh, some work what we have done in Nepal. So actually, I am a medical physicist um, uh, working at a national um, academy of medical sciences, Beer Hospital since 2000, uh, to the 19. Uh, uh, 98. So uh, I have been involved in teaching and research for the uh, uh, for my MD uh, radiologist and radiation oncologist resident as well as I am involved in drafting uh, regulations um, law for the country of Nepal. So with my short introduction, I would like to um, start my presentation. So I, before I go further, I would like to highlight how we have started radiation services in Nepal. So actually, in, in uh, first we have we have started X-ray in 1923, and in uh, just after a few years, 25 years of the discovery of the X-ray, so it was it was started in Army Hospital. So in 1976, we have started um, first brachytherapy services by using radium needle. So that was donated by the U.S. government to the government of Nepal. At that time, we even didn't have um, any radiation therapy services. So before radiation th therapy services, we have started brachytherapy. In 1988 is the, I, I think this is the one of the most um, uh, historical um, uh, year um, in the field of radiological services. So we got our first CT scan. Um, service at my hospital at National Academy of Medical Sciences. In the same year, we have started first nuclear medicine service in the Nepal. And in 1991, Beer Hospital, my institution has started first radiation therapy services with the um, Cobalt 60 equipment um, uh, by using Cobalt 60 equipment. And in 2002, we have um, we have installed um, uh, first linear accelerator in Nepal. And similarly, in uh, 2000, in the same year, first SDR brachytherapy remote afterloading system has been started at BB Koirala Memorial Cancer Hospital, Bharatpur. And in 2015, we got first blood irradiator at Civil Servant, uh, Civil Servant Hospital in Kathmandu. So with this um, uh, brief history, I would like to um, highlight how uh, medical uh, nuclear medicine service was started in Nepal. So first of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. G.S. Ponth. Um, uh, he is the medical physicist. He was um, in Kathmandu. And Dr. Ram Krishna Shrestha and Mr. Mukunda Mainali for uh, providing me this um, uh, information. But unfortunately, I do not have the picture of that machine, which was first, um, which, um, which was the first nuclear medicine in Nepal. So uh, in the equipment was from Siemens, it's an orbital gamma camera. So in 1987, in the, um, I have already given you the history in the history, Professor Dr. A.K. Basu, nuclear medicine physician, and Dr. Gauri Shankar Pant, a medical physicist from All India Institute of Medical Sciences, India, New Delhi, India, was sent to Nepal to start and to run the nuclear medicine as well as CT, CT scan, which was installed at the same year, what I have already mentioned. At that time, five member team from India were there, including in engineer also, including the service engineer. So they were here for the three years. Actually, they were assigned for the two years, but later after with the request of the Nepal government, 
um, uh, their tenure has been increased. What increased um, for the next um, one year? In the meantime, Dr. Bishnulal Joshi, a radiologist, and Dr. Uh, Lakshman Raj Loni, he was he's, he was also a radiologist, was trained in the field. At that time, we didn't have no, no we didn't have any any nuclear medicine physician in the country so they were trained as a nuclear medicine physician uh, nuclear medicine work at the all india institute of medical sciences for one year and after they returned they have started um, uh, with a um, uh, technician deputy uh, technician uh, mr mukunda mainali who was the first nuclear medicine technician he was trained in the nuclear medicine so they worked um, for the um, uh, and run the uh, that um, nuclear medicine in uh, for the next 15 years so uh, this is the uh, first nuclear medicine private uh, nuclear medicine at private center the doctor was assigned um, from the who was he was in he was invited by the private center in nepal to start uh, the, to run their nuclear medicine service um, from india so he was here and um, the medical physicist was assigned from the nepal and all the other art technician were also from the nepal the service only runs for the um, three years so after that um, uh, we uh, they, they have stopped um, uh, uh, the nuclear medicine service in nepal i don't know why so in uh, before i um, move forward i would like to um, inform you that the new era in the field of uh, um, radiation used in medical was started in 2004 before the, we, we we were not uh, be a, became a member country of the iaea and we still didn't have the regulatory board any regulations or law so um, uh, my, my institution national academy of medical sciences had started um, one national project in the field of radiation used in medicine uh, to find out what is the status of radiation and uh, equipment and radiation production at the different institution in nepal so we have done one project and under that project we have organized one workshop um, uh, with uh, by inviting all the policy makers and higher level officials to inform that how important is to regulate radiation used in the medical field so um, so we have done that and we similarly we have done another project in 2005 2005 and organized national and, and national symposium symposium also um, uh, works or symposium and in time to time we have organized and um, try to convince the um, policy makers let's work let's work to develop uh, radiation law and regulations from, and as well as regulatory body for the country and try let's let's make nepal a member country of the iaea so it was started like that so um, I would like to say that the, the turning point for the Nepal in the field of radiation was in 2008. In 2008, uh, so Nepal became a member country of the IAEA, IAEA, International Atomic Energy Agency. So um, IAEA Technical Cooperation Project started in 2010. So medical phases, other, I have, we have played an active role in developing new national project for the country in 2010. So I, so, uh, so, so after, after we developed, at that time we have developed five different projects uh, for the country, including radiation safety infrastructure means we have to develop how we develop um, uh, nuclear law radio regulations and there was a, also another health um, uh, related project um, uh, under that I'll, I'll come on later that under that we have a lot of um, uh, work to develop radiation used in the medical field so at, until now, the radiologists, nuclear medicine physicians, medical physicians, radiation oncologists, radiographers were received since then an opportunity to train in, the, in their respective field uh, through the IEA trainings, fellowships, and scientific visits, visits, as well as we have organized lots, many, many IEA export missions. So they have visited and suggest us how can how could we move in the in the future. So, so I come to my point. What do we have now? 
so it's the current status what type of uh, what do we do we have so uh, in 2007 we have developed nuclear policy to make proper use of nuclear energy by its development and only for the peaceful utilization as i said in 2015 first um, uh, first um, some legal um, type of document uh, brings um, bring out uh, brought by the ministry of education science and technology to regulate uh, uh, the radiation uh, being used in the Nepal radiation sources like radioactive materials like cobalt everything they had started because we were late because we were not able to bring out our um, uh, regulations um, um, law on time um, at that time, uh, we tried to convince. It, it was a lot of difficult in by using the nuclear word to the, how we can uh, convince the policy maker or even in the lawmakers. It's a very difficult to convince the lawmakers um, about the use of the word nuclear. So, uh, but at last in 2004, we we got our first. The um, law, law, and in the in the year last in the this year we we got our um, uh, rules. Um, uh, uh, I mean regulations, um, regulations. So in, in uh, how, before um, uh, we have this type of uh, inventory, we didn't have any type of uh, uh, docu uh, legal document. How many radiation uh, immunity equipment are being used in Nepal? So there is there was no official data or something like that. So we can um, use in the field of um, radiation so so um, i was um, assigned to um, uh, do an inventory in, in the field of um, uh, uh, radiation what type of radiation being used in the country in nepal so we have developed this so under that we at least we we uh, we have some picture about the what type of equipment um, we do we have in the nepal so um, uh, in time to time i i i um, I, I try my best to update the what type of equipment we do have right now in the um, or we are using because of, until and unless we do have a regulatory body, we cannot use, um, we cannot, um, we cannot, we cannot say that um, uh, these type of equipment we do, we, we do have, but at least we, we know what type of uh, radiation uh, immunity equipment we, um, we are using in radiation therapy and nuclear medicine. So, um, uh, so cobalt 60 because of, because of the development of the technology because earlier we had uh, five cobalt 60 in nepal four four cobalt 60 in nepal now it's a declining phrase nobody wants to use the cobalt 60 and everybody is moving towards the nuclear uh, towards the um, uh, linear accelerator so um, we have developed that so similarly uh, right now we are um, in, in the field of nuclear medicine we are using gamma cam camera four gamma cam camera was is in nepal but out of four only um, uh, out of four four are using but still one one gamma camera which i have shown earlier in my uh, previous slide that the private center they are not using their nuclear medicine service i, I have already mentioned that is is i mean stopped so pet city we, we we do have a pet, three pet city in Nepal right now. So all the FDG they are, they import from in India. So it's a very expensive. It's all cost is around four hundred fifty dollars per patient. It's a very expensive until and unless we do have a cyclotron in country. So blood related we do have uh, this. So uh, regarding the activities, what we have done, we have done a lot of works, workshop and um, a program uh, to um, educate even even the policy maker as well as the uh, uh, radiation workers um, uh, to develop um, developing rules and regulations. So um, uh, so we have done a lot of work in developing, and I got a lot of uh, support from the international organizations like uh, US DOE have even even supported us in developing our security. And IA was there. IA is always there, and IA IAEA has already provided a lot of training for the uh, lawmakers and, uh, as well as um, uh, law expert in the field to develop the how they they, they went to the IAEA and for the uh, some time and they trained to in developing um, law and regulations. 
so uh, we have done some public awareness because at that time when we use i have already mentioned that when we use the word nuclear so people uh, the, the lawmaker are not happy because because uh, the word nuclear and radiation was uh, it looks like a threat to them so so i have uh, tried and then we have tried our best to um, to aware public as well as um, lawmakers through different type uh, through the different kinds of the media media to that we need a law to uh, why we need a law why why safety and security is needed so regarding the radiation therapy these are the equipment we still um, we we have in nepal right now we we do we, we are using so um, uh, there are a lot of there is a big development in the field of radiation therapy in nepal so so um, uh, so we we are going to have a lot of um, uh, radiation therapy machine uh, because earlier um, in my slide i have shown that there, there is uh, the per uh, the equipment per uh, per uh, per million in in inhabitant is less than 2 or 1% mm, uh, so we are developing a lot in the field of uh, radiation therapy so they, they, uh, there are a lot of uh, new uh, radiation therapy centers are upcoming and we have already started uh, regulating uh, regulating them through the ministry of uh, health and population and ministry of science and technology so uh, so regarding the um, uh, nuclear medicine fees uh, nuclear medicine service in nepal um, uh, we, we 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 have um, uh, right now we, there are uh, seven centers they, uh, those who, uh, they do have some uh, different kinds of nuclear medicine um, services but i would like to mention one thing i would like to mention that here is that the radiologic uh, the first ct scan and the first nuclear medicine gamma camera was installed in the same year in 19 in 1987 I, I have shown in my history uh, presentation so the but what the radiology is developed very rapidly very rapidly but uh, nuclear medicine could not move as uh, as it should be because because maybe because of the there was a uh, there was no nuclear medicine physician at the time only radiologists and trained in nuclear medicine was working and people are not interested i don't know why people are not interested because the nuclear medicine is very important in, in detection of the cancer because we, we need that machine uh for the uh, treatment of cancer so at that that is that is the least of nuclear medicine physician and so in at some center even uh, radiologists are still uh reporting so uh, these are i have requested some some of the nuclear medicine physician to provide some of the pictures and information but i could not be able to get that in time so i i put um, um, i would like to thank um, um <clears throat> Uh, one one of the uh, physician at my hospital onu bhatrai uh, she has given me the number of, of the nuclear medicine physician and, and the nuclear medicine technologies so these are the we would have nine nuclear medicine physicians it's a, now uh, nowadays it's increasing so um, uh, still we do not have uh, nuclear medicine physicist in the country so we would like to have um, some um, some nuclear medicine uh, physicist um, uh, because um, and radio pharmacist we earlier have one radio pharmacist but he, he he has moved to the canada he was working at my center so some some other other nuclear medicine technologies are trained in uh, radiographers so, uh, but in the field of uh, the nuclear medicine, there are a lot of ongoing national projects. Uh, so, Nepal um, should um, uh, take a lot of benefit under this project. So, title developing and radiation uh, have, uh, is, is called NEP6001. Actually, I have designed that project way back in 2010. It's a developing radiation health services infrastructure. Under that, I, uh, we have put uh, nepal should have need one nuclear medicine um, uh, equipment so under that project um, we have um, um, involved to purchase one nuclear medicine uh, for the bp koirala cancer hospital uh, bharatpur under that project 
so later on uh, they have given us that equipment so they, there is yet another project strengthening and expanding nuclear medicine services uh, 6 2002 so um, uh, this project was uh, developed with myself and uh, onu dr onu patrai nuclear medicine physician working at my uh, our our institution national academy of medical science under that we um, we are supposed to upgrade our equipment to the city and also that at my institutions and i has already allocated the budget to buy two spec city for my hospital and one for the bb corella cancer hospital but unfortunately we still do not have a upgrade regime system so we couldn't buy uh, still 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 we are working on that as soon as we complete that we will we'll, we'll get the equipment Let's hope that and uh, let's finger cross. So uh, there are yet another project strengthening nuclear medicine services. It was a start um, uh, in 6006. The main objective to improve the healthcare of provision of cardiovascular diseases, diseases, and there is um, um, uh, 6007 promoting nuclear medicine services in Nepal. Its main objective is to improve management of the patient affected by osteoporosis and cardiac diseases. So these are the projects which is leading by the nuclear medicine physician, different nuclear medicine physician in Nepal. So um, uh, what I have already mentioned that this this is this is the gamma camera which we have we have um, uh, Nepal has uh, uh, um, Nepal um, uh, got from the uh, with the help of IAEA donations, so it was installed at the BB Koirala Memorial Cancer Hospital, and they are they are just providing its service to the cancer um, a lot of uh, in a lot of uh, <clears throat> patients. So one more thing, so though we still do not have the regulatory body, we have already have a regulations. So, uh, so we have already started uh, regulating, uh, regulating different type of equipment. If someone wants to have a linear accelerator, so, so before they start their service, we'll go and we'll inspect the bunker, we'll ins inspect the bunker, how they, um, they are going to build it. The main thing that uh, it, it, we have uh, already done it different um, uh, institution in accordance to the um, uh, health institution operational standard it's a uh, don't go to uh, to uh, 2077 it's not a 2070 it's a nepalese 2077 we are far ahead of, of the um, uh, to 2021 it was some um, it's, a, it's a, it, if you compare to um, uh, it, it was the last year it, it was um, uh, published so um, under that we we have to go and we inspect um, how they are they build their bunker how they are um, providing safety and uh, security of the radiation sources uh, which is going to be used in that um, institution after they um, bring it so um, I have already mentioned that with the, with the help of the U.S. government uh, uh, office of radiological security, we have installed different types of um, security system and trained different personnel um, at different institutions which have um, you know, category one and category two sources. Now they only help us to protect the, the, the category one sources. The security system has been installed before that. We have we do have we had a wooden door after 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 now with the, with the help of wearers we have put the two biometric with the two key uh, um, strong steel door. So, um, um, uh, so regarding issues, we do have a lot of issues. Roles and regarding roles and responsibilities of the radiation workers, regulating st structure, registration, certificates, and staffing level, education and training, continuous professional CPD, DPD. So, in, uh, regarding regulatory for framework, we still do. I have already mentioned that we still do not have a um, regulatory, um, uh, regulatory infrastructure, regulatory board. So, st and still we do not have the job district. What are the roles and responsibility of the medical physicians? Then, uh, there is no because being a medical physicist, I am trying my best to get some. Um, a description from the government that what 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 is our role because we already are we are following the IA standard because there is clearly mentioned what what is the role of the medical physician in the IAEA. Mm -hmm. 
documents so the workplace uh, monitoring is still lacking because and acceptance and team to commissioning test it it is it is done in the radiation therapy and the nuclear medicine but uh, in the field of radio radi radiology diagnostic radiology, no one is uh, performing uh, acceptance and commissioning test so quality control test in regular quality control test um, as is still not done in many diagnostic radiology, uh, diagnostic radiology, but, it, but, but, but it's done in nuclear medicine. So uh, personal radiation dose monitoring is still not um, um, uh, done at some lot of lot of institutions. So uh, regarding the regular structure, registration and positioning, which medical physicians professionally yet to be regulated by uh, by any government authority. So we are not regulated and we have not re registered anywhere. So um, we are working on that yet to have the licensing, registration and certification for the medical physicians because they are the most responsible uh, person for uh, safety and security of the radiation sources in, in their institutions. So there is also a lack of medical physics position in the government system. Uh, Minister of Health and Population Nepal has yet to create the uh, uh, medical physics position. Similarly, there is the lack of nuclear medicine position in the government system. Still, uh, Ministry of Health Population of Nepal has yet to create the post for nuclear medicine physician, even and also nuclear medicine pharmacist and their nuclear medicine technician. They they still lacking. So so we have to go and we have to try to convince. We have to meet the policymaker in time to time, including all the all all the nuclear medicine. Um, professional, so they have to convince the government and they have to try their best to um, create a post uh, in the government system until and unless we they do uh, we do have the post in the government system. Um, our professional, it, it is it will be difficult to um, uh, develop um, more and pro more professional in this um, in the in the country. So there are still issues because we still do have some uh, disused radioactive sources, which is lying at the different prim premises in Nepal. So, so uh, regard. So one of the most important issue what I would like to highlight is the transportation of the radioactive sources because of the. Covid pandemic, a um, uh, lot of nuclear medicine centers are um, was um, uh, closed because because they, they they are not able to transfer any kind of um, uh, radio pharmacist um, uh, from outside the country. So it's it's also um, uh, because because a lot of it, I have the I came to know that a lot of uh, vendors are complaining when we we, we are in the Ministry of Health during the minute they, they, they told us that it's very difficult to handling the uh, transportation radioactive source uh, for the brachytherapy or uh, brachytherapy or cobalt 60 um, uh, to safety disposal. So international shipment is also done. It's a, but it's a very hard to convince airlines to take back the disused source to the to its country of uh, origin for the disposal because they are unsure whether it is safe or not. In spite of all the labels that are pasted the alongside and those red stickers certified by the medical field, still uh, it's a very difficult. So we have to go to the airlines and we are try we are trying our best to convince. No, no, it's, it's very safe and you can handle it. By because we are even even though now we didn't have any type of regulation at that time, but we are uh, totally following IEA standards in transportation of the radioactive sources. How we transport is so domestic plane, no domestic flights are capable of handling radioactive materials. They have to use privately hired vehicles for the source um, without GPS um, and cannot be tracked. And there are the other issues. Um, one of the tissue source on the uh, what was used for the uh, bracket therapy was disappeared uh, um, uh, when uh, it was uh, on the way for the transportation of the country of origin. So um, after, after it was published in the newspaper and uh, the next day it was um, um, recovered and this has created um, uh, um, the it was a um, created the big question on safety and security of the radioactive sources in nepal so um, regarding the education and training so um, uh, nepal still does not have medical physics and nuclear medicine post graduate level education and training pro program so we are trying our best because we are we are participating in different 
because I can say about the medical physics because we have been participating in different RCF project which is lit con uh, which obviously is in the Korea so we are doing uh, a lot of work so we have already started a lot of work on on to start the postgraduate uh, program in my institution because my institution is the deep university we already have um, uh, a MD MD radio radio diagnostics MD MD radiation oncology uh, MSc medical imaging technology BSc MA medical imaging technology so we are, we are running and we do have a, a good setup including nuclear medicine and radiation therapy uh, so uh, let's hope we'll have a, a, a um, medical physics program uh, very soon in the country uh, and we are also planning to start the radiation therapy technology program in the, the, the student who can be trained in the nuclear medicine because we are uh, nuclear medicine technician is also lacking uh, is a big shortage, shortage shortage in Nepal so we should have a uh, program in nuclear medicine uh, technique uh, technique te te uh, technology uh, for the uh, radiographers so, so we, we should have started we should have so, um, uh, so I come to my uh, end of the uh, presentation. So my last uh, part of the presentation, what are the challenges we do have? We do have the regulatory infrastructure is a big challenge. Qualified manpower workloads is another big challenge. Complete inventory, we still have. We have done some inventory, but we still do not have any kind of source number. A lot of things we have to find out. In the future, and recognition and roles and responsibility of the radiation workers, seriousness, commitment, and knowledge of the about the about the uh, program and work, storage and disposal of the radioactive sources. How can we um, store and dispose the radioactive sources? Emergency preparedness and response to stop brain drain. This is one of the most important challenge. What I think is that to stop the brain drain and um, to stay in this professional um, longer. So in spite of that, but I am very much optimistic that we have done a lot in the field of radiation, uh, radiation in Nepal. So, uh, um, uh, so despite all the impending challenges, the radioactive materials utilization and Radi regulation act has materialized the effective as of July 2020. It has paved the way to formation of the regulatory infrastructure after the authenticity of radioactive materials utilization and regulation act most has already developed and passed radioactive materials utilization and regulation. It's called the regulations. So we are working. So these and at the right side of my slide, and, uh, and, uh, these are the uh, the photograph of um, our law and the regulations. And um, uh, we have already started uh, developing standard in the nuclear medicine and uh, and radiation therapy and um, uh, diagnostic. What what type of manpower do we need in the nuclear medicine? What type of uh, room uh, um, layout should be needed uh, when you want to install PET city or gamma camera or even even cyclotron? So we are we are working on that. It's almost complete and still um, uh, it, I think uh, we will have very soon that standard. So regarding the uh, Ministry of Health and Population has already started monitoring um, hospitals with a new standard. They have constituted one committee. And um, in that committee, um, uh, we do have a radiology, nuclear medicine, and medical physicists, including myself. We then will look at the application who, if any institutions want to have a uh, radiation emanating equipment facility. So we'll look at the their stand uh, their um, uh, status and uh, the train staff and then then only that will permit them to import the radiation radi radiation magnetic equipment so uh, there is in in that there is a, there is a, we have already mentioned that how what type of nuclear medicine facilities should be there so um, it was already published so at least we now we can say that we do have some standard for the nuclear medicine in, also in in uh, in, uh, um, in nepal so it, it's, it's also um, mentioned that nuclear medicine physician what what, what is the um, qualification what should be the qualification of the nuclear medicine physician in nepal so um, it has already mentioned that yeah, MD or MD DM uh, should be the minimum qualification to be a, a nuclear medicine physician in Nepal. And similarly, we have also mm, mentioned nuclear medicine technologist. Um, what should be the uh, nuclear medicine mm, technologist? Because because due to the lack of lack of the nuclear medicine technician, we have to encourage a lot of radiographers to come into this field. And we have also mentioned the nuclear mm, medicine pharmacist. 
qualification and how can we can utilize why we can accommodate them in the nuclear medicine so these are the uh, these are the I have highlighted this uh, to the uh, uh, to for your kind of but there is a mistake for the qualification of the medical pieces. It was written it was written uh, that the medical pieces qualification should be the bachelor, but it's not with bachelor you you can't be the medical pieces. If you want to be medical pieces, you have to, you must have a minimum um, postgraduate level education. So similarly, we have done a lot of a lot of. Um, Awareness program throughout the uh, throughout the con country and uh, and different different uh, different um, radiation experts from different part of the Nepal um, uh, being involved in uh, training program. So so and um, and also I would like to inform that the security system has been already installed in category one and source uh, two sources. But what I would like to say that we would like to discourage the radioactive sources in Nepal as we do not have any disposal facility. So, so, so we are we are looking forward to the alternative technology um, to the radioactive sources in which I am also working with a different institution on that so regulations are in place but not not a regulatory body and process for the standards of medicine has been already started and already developed so hopefully we'll have very soon so um, we we have received a lot of equipment a lot of lot of equipment, physics equipment mainly um, the quality control equipment to uh, to for to provide the better quality of treatment to the cancer patient through the IAEA. So uh, what we have noticed that um, uh, different institutions, who, who, even even the private sector, they don't want to spend a lot of money in the um, uh, physics quality control um, uh, equipment. So what we have done is that we are providing different type of uh, quality control equipment as per need of the different issues for the time being after they after after they they can they they must return their equipment after the use of that equipment so so the way forward i would like to highlight the last one because we because we have already started um, uh, um, the house um, when, um, survey for the nuclear technology um, uh, technology center in nepal but uh, um, i i know i know it will take a um, many years uh, to start the nuclear technology center in nepal but i would like to highlight the cyclotron because because uh, at least nepal should have one cyclotron in nepal and government has already allocated a budget um, in this physical year to purchase the um, cyclotron but i don't i don't think it's uh, more than sufficient to purchase the cyclotrons and so because i have already mentioned uh, because patient are paying around 450 usd for um for the uh, pet city scan it's a very very expensive in nepal as um, uh, there is no um, uh, insurance system to pay for the uh, for the patient so uh, if we have a um, cyclotron in in the country and, and the, i think the price will be um, uh, reduced drastically so in conclusion, I would like to um, highlight these um, a few points. Radiation law and regulations are in place, but uh, we, we yet to have a regulated body, yet to have a medical thesis and nuclear medicine position in the government system. Uh, Ministry of Health and Population of Nepal has yet to create the position. So we, have, we should have try in how to create the uh, position in the government system. Rules and regulations regarding medical thesis are still lacking. Yet to have a medical thesis in diagnostic radiology and nuclear medicine service in Nepal. The need of medical thesis is a worldwide problem and duly so recognized, uh, but it is more acute in Nepal. Various IA technical cooperation project in nuclear medicine and radiation therapy since 2012. We, we, are, we, we are doing a lot, a lot of work in this uh, field. Nepal has been participating in IEA related workshop, IEA and RAS fellowship training and meeting, including IEA export mission in the diagnostic radiology, nuclear medicine and uh, recently which will definitely uh, which is definitely helping nepal in, in developing um, in quality of um, the um, uh, services so in last i would like to um, close my presentation with beautiful um, picture thank you if you have any questions i'm free to thank you dr kanchan uh uh, we were very impressed with the effort uh, put into creating regulation, safety, radiation safety, and regulatory standards in mm -hmm. Nepal. 
And thanks again for sharing your related experience. So would there be any questions or comments from the, from the participants? Before I would like to have some uh, uh, questions that uh, I think you have already mentioned. So the, the, <clears throat> the responsible uh, organization for the nuclear safety is currently Ministry of Health for the medical radiation or to who, what kind of organization is in charge of uh, like medical radiation safety in the part. And so actually in Korea, we have like, it's I think separated from the Ministry of Health. Mm -hmm. So other, <clears throat> yeah, so curious about the point. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your question. It's a very interesting question. Actually, it's actually uh, the regulations and rule mentioned that Ministry of Education, Science and Technology is the line ministry. And under that ministry, there, there, should, uh, there should be a regulatory body. But we still do not have the regulatory body. Yeah. And all the radiation medical physicists, um, uh, those uh, the persons who are responsible for the radiation safety as um, in the field of medicine, they belongs to the um, uh, um, different institution under the Ministry of Health and Population. So right now, right now, Ministry of Education uh, is not doing any inspection only they, they have recently done one inspection to provide um, uh, nuclear medicine facility um, with, uh, at the um, eastern part of nepal it's called japa they they, they have started one pit um, uh, uh, scan they are importing their fdg from the india but it's a it's a but to import the equipment the request came to the Ministry of uh, Health, where I'm the one of the members. So we <coughs> look at their uh, documents and they, we have granted the permission. But but actually, the all these radiation safety related matters, what we have mentioned, what, do you, what are you doing in Korea, it should be done like that in Nepal. So I hope as soon as we do have the regulatory body, it's come, everything comes under that umbrella. But it's a, right now, it's a, for, uh, from the both, from Ministry uh, of um, Health is doing in their own way and uh, so Ministry of Science and Technology be, is doing, because Ministry of Science and Technology, they do not have um, the expert or qualified manpower because they have to request someone from the Ministry of Health to um, uh, to um, bring them for the inspection or some something that like that. Yeah, I think there might be some pros and cons for so so in the future. Where do you think the regulatory body will be placed in the like Ministry of Health or like Ministry of Science in near? So I think no. there can be some differences according to it. So Thank you. In the, what do you think? Yeah, by the thumb of the rule, the regulatory body should be independent. That's so not under the either, either not under the Ministry of Science and Technology or, or Ministry of Health and Population. But actually what our um, law has said that they have done a different way. They have created, uh, the, the they have mentioned that, it has already mentioned, clearly mentioned that regulatory bodies should be a department under the Ministry of Science and Technology. It, it is clearly mentioned in the law. So um, in the future, it will go under the Ministry of um, Education, Science and Technology. But um, um, so I have already mentioned that there are a lot of challenges in running that um, um, regulatory body because of because of because uh, they do, do not have any qualified experts. So we have to develop Ministry of Science and Technology has to develop um, uh, qualified manpower to um, recruit them in the um, future regulatory body. So they, they should have start from the beginning. Now, right now, they have to start. I have already mentioned, I, I tried my best to 
always they when I, I i'm in the meeting i try my best to um, provide this message to them let's develop the qualified manpower see if you want to run uh, um, the regulatory body smoothly thank you and uh just one more might be i have seen from your slide that there is a iaa supporting program regarding radio immunoassay so is it how is the circumstance uh, radio immunoassay for is it uh, operated by the nuclear medicine department yes and yes yes actually all the um, uh, national uh, project ie technical cooperation project uh, is um, leading by the nuclear medicine physician um, hmm. uh, mostly mostly by uh, doc, dr anu nirola whom uh, she has whom uh, so she, and uh, dr madhu 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 neopane from the bharatpur cancer hospital so they are leading the project because the first one the first one project um, uh, i have i have designed and helped anu anu dr anu to um, design the project after that the three project i can see in the um, ia platform but i i do not have much information on that so it would be if i i i i i can't see anu nirola in this um, uh, uh, today's um, uh, program of if, if she is there she, she would be the right person to give uh, provide you this answer yeah okay thank you very much so thank would you. there be other uh questions or comments from the participants maybe uh there might be similar <clears throat> issues or challenges uh, confronted by the many other countries. So would there be some questions or comments? Okay, I think now. So, okay, thank you again for your wonderful lectures and actually sharing your experience. Thank you very much. And for the participants, I think we can see you next week for the next session. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you once again for providing me this opportunity. I would like to thank Department of Nuclear Medicine, Seoul National Institute. Thank you very much. Thank you bye very bye. much. Namaste. Thank you yep. very much.